everyone. Hope y'all having a wonderful day. So today we're going to talk about Meg by <laughs> the author. So the author's name first. Um, Soul Swift by Megan Bannon. Um, just finished reading this book yesterday, and by yesterday I mean last week because I record these all in advance. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, broke my heart, but in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. Um, so, the book follows Gala and Tavik, friends with Havoc. Um, he does says that a lot in the book. I love, I love them, personally. I think they have such a rich dynamic between the two of them. And I really do appreciate Gala's narrative, her internal narrative. I really do think it is interesting to read and explore and to see where she's coming from as far as uh, a character comes from because she she comes from a convent um, and what I think is interesting is this author's take uh, religion. That's not to say it's a heavily religious novel, but it does bring a lot of religious beliefs into question. I really do like that. I, I felt like this is the way I have discussions of religion with people. Um, you just kind of have faith. And I'm not a religious person. I, I, I'm not. I'm Wiccan. Uh, I was raised Catholic, but I'm Wiccan because I just don't always agree with a lot of um, Catholicism. I, do, I still do uh, participate in things such as Lent with my family, but, but I don't always agree with the Bible teachings, and I think a lot of them are outdated. Uh, I don't mean any offense. That's my personal thing. Just like I completely respect my family as Catholic, and they respect me as being a Wiccan, um, and I respect my in-laws as being Christian, and Pretty sure they know I'm Wiccan, considering we had a hand fasting ceremony, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, what I think is really interesting, like I said, is how this author kind of talks about religion. Because you have in this novel, uh, the Holy Order of Oban, you know, Obanist. And there, I see. See, I don't want to give anything away because I feel like it's really important to read. I think it's really great if you take up this novel and you read it and you just kind of like, your mind unfolds along with Gayla's because she's been taught to hide her woman, her woman left, her woman, womanness. You know, she is a daughter of Oven. She's a vessel of all things. She's a vessel for the father and she has this capability to sing scripture sanctus as they call it and everything she sings is just the emotions the impact that story is pressed onto the listener either in um, uplifting ways or agonizing ways or sanctifying ways and I think it's really interesting how the novel and the author tackle that and address that and really give the story a lot of depth to it because she meets a heathen. Uh, he is a follower. He is an Elathian. And you can tell I just read this book because I still remember everything. <laughs> um, he's an Elathian. And I think it's really interesting to see that um, explored because he's a heathen and you get to see like these juxtaposed religious beliefs but they sort of they, they question each other they throw things back and forth you know they don't try to convert one another but they are respectful to the other and they that's what I think is great they are respectful to another one another and they explore their religious ideals to one another and I think it forms a really strong bond between the two characters. They really are enriching characters, um, Tavik and Gala. And I do think that there's a lot of growth to their dynamic because 
they are learning to see outside their religion. You know, they're, they went into, they grew up in the world with, you know, this just sort of mindset, not a narrow mindset, but just like, you know, scope vision, I want to say, you know, scope vision. And now that they're, you know, they're creating a dialogue with one another, their scope is kind of breaking and fracturing and opening up. And I think it's really enlightening. That's what I think is great about this book. It's enlightening um, without being disrespectful to any one person's religion. I think it's something that can be adopted. And I think any person, any religious sect can, like me, I'm not religious really, I'm Wiccan, but I was able to relate to this on a very personal level. And and my husband's an atheist. <laughs> uh, it's I was able to relate to it, you know, growing up raised Catholic, never baptized, just raised Catholic, um, and I had the privilege of growing up at my mom's college, she, she went to MIT, she had friends who were, they were Jewish, um, Islamic, Muslim, different sects of Catholicism, uh, some Buddhists, so I had the privilege of growing up around a lot of religions and learning a lot at a very young age um, and you know I feel like I was able to connect to the story because of that because I was able to relate it to a memory of mine you know really good memory of mine because um, some of those people they are still very dear to me I still they're on my Facebook they're they were all my babysitters um, <coughs> but I think it's really empowering. I think that's what I'm going for. Because it's so relatable, it's empowering. You can relate to this. You can attach any religion you want to this story. It doesn't alienate any other, any religion. It is a fictional religion, but the way they're talking about it, the dialogue uh, between them, that is relatable to anyone. That's what I think, you know, those core beliefs, that's what's relatable. And I think that's what makes this novel really strong and have lots of depth to it. Now, uh, as for the characterization, there's so much growth here. I think Gail is great. I love her internal narrative, like when she talks to herself in her head, she's just like, oh God. And I love their dynamic, you know, these two are supposed to be enemies and then they grow really well together. They become such great friends. I love how their relationship develops. It's it's not cliche. It's just like a breath of fresh air. Uh, and oh god, that ending. It was so bittersweet. It broke my heart. I was reading it in... Where was I reading it? I was reading it here on the sofa. In my son's room. And I was just like, oh. It really impacted me. It like broke my heart. But it was beautiful. It had such a beautiful ending, the, the language to it, the, the way the story ends, it, it lives, it ends on a note of hope. That's what I want to say. It ends with hope, you know, like there's hope at the end. Even though it's kind of sad how it ends, there is hope. There is this uplifting tone to it that just leaves the reader just warmed even though you're sad you're you're warm you know your heart is warm and that's what I really loved about this um story and you know what I, after reading this I really want to read more of her stuff you know I want to read her previous novel The Bird and the Blade that's definitely something I want to read now because I think her language and her structure and her pacing is all very solid. I was very engaged with this story and I loved the humor that she splashed in throughout and I love the history and I love the plot development. It was all very cohesive. It's all very engaging. You are engaged with this story because you know there's depth to it. There is a lot of complexities to it that raise the stakes of the novel. There's also a lot of humor and really good story development and rich 
dynamics between these characters. I mean, Gala, she starts off as this daughter, and then she's not, by the end, she's a fierce warrior. And Tavik runs with Havoc. Um, he's just, he is a fierce warrior, but I think they bring out the best in one another. Once again, that goes to that dialogue between them. They push each other, they question each other, but they respect each other. Like, they try to enlighten each other of their own beliefs, but they are still respectful of their, of the other's core beliefs. You know, they don't just say, well, that's just shit. Um, well, no, Tavik, Tavik does say that <laughs> in a way. It's just like, that's just my thing. Um, and I think it's great that they're questioning each other's religious beliefs because, once again, depth, strong dynamics, it's enriching, ultimately. It is an enriching read because of that, and you just kind of love these characters. They, they really do grow on you, especially Tavik. I, I love the effect he has on Gala. I like how she... I like how she grows. I really do think her journey is one of self-discovery and self-worth because she was only thought, again, she was taught to hide her womanness, you know, bind her breast. She was, you know, shaven head and, you know, she lets her hair grow. Lots of, lots of time passes in this novel. You know, they are running away from the Holy Church of the Ovenist, um, of Oven. And they are trying they're pretty much going across the entire, I would say, the entire length of the, of the United States on foot. Like, that would take you no hitchhiking, no carriage rides, nothing. You're, you're going from the East Coast to the West Coast on foot. Just imagine how long that would take you. Um, that, would, that would take a while. And... It's probably even longer. I mean, her hair gets to grow out. She's got nice red curls. Uh, and she really does grow as a character. And I really do like how she grows and becomes this fierce warrior in the end. And I love how Tavik grows as well. You know, they both kind of learn that they were both sort of wrong. And that there is something that unifies their religions. Um, and I think that's great. because They find peace in that. And I love that. That's what I, I think that's what I really loved about this. Um, <laughs> so, so happy. Thank you, publishers, for giving me an arc of Soul, Soul Swift. Really loved it. I uh, completely appreciate this novel, and I can't stress this enough. It's totally worth the read. So I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars, because it just it, it really did impact me. I really do think it has a lot of mature maturity to it, and a lot of, you know, humor and lightheartedness and hope to it. And I think it's something really important to read in today's kind of climate. Um, it is, I think it is worth the read. So, once again, Soul Swift by Megan Bannon. Five stars. I'm going to include a link to purchase the book on bookshop.org in the description below. Money's tight, which I completely understand. Please um, check out the book from your local library. Once again, totally worth the totally worth the read. Definitely, definitely a book club worthy novel where you can sit around and read it and discuss it. I mean, this is a novel I would love to discuss with other people. So please read it. Insert comments. Tell me what you thought about it so that we can discuss it. Please, I'm begging you. Um, and on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Um, happy reading, guys.